So Illustrator has a tool called the Spiral Tool. And at first glance, you might think, well, why do I need to use that? I don't need to do any kind of spirals. But it can be very useful for creating illustrations, icons, and logo designs. And it can make your work a lot more professional as well, because you kind of get a much more consistent tapering off of your points. So instead of me waffling on, I'm just going to show you what I mean. So let's hop into Illustrator. I'm going to go up here and grab the Spiral Tool. Very nice. And we can click and drag and make lovely spirals. Well, hey, or we can click anywhere and we can punch in a bunch of settings. Let's not worry about this too much for now. What we're going to do is click and drag, holding shift. <laughs> I feel like I say that all the time. And we get a spiral. So we'll start with something like this. And then we're going to press R for the rotate tool. Rotate, holding shift. <laughs> there we go. So we get it looking pretty much like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this one horizontally. There we go. Now, as you can see, by default, we do get a lot of spiral, probably a little bit too much, actually. In fact, I'm going to rotate this 180 again. There we go. Fantastic. So, yeah, we have a lot of spiralage <laughs> by default. But what we can do is we can use a direct selection tool. And we can just delete the segments that we don't want. So I'm just going to delete a few there. And if we go and thicken this up, let's chunk up that stroke weight. Very nice. Not entirely sure why I suddenly went northern then, but hey, there we go. It's a Tuesday. No, it's not. It's Wednesday. <laughs> what am I even saying? Anyway, so we have one spiral. What we're going to do now is drag with Alter Option and Shift and then rotate this 180 degrees. Now I want to scale this down, but towards that bottom point. So we're gonna press S for the scale tool, click on that bottom point, and now we can scale to or from it. Just be careful with this tool because it can be a little bit twitchy, Oh, <laughs> as you can see here. So we'll do that very carefully, Go a little bit smaller, nice. And then again, we'll use the direct selection tool to get rid of some of those points. And what we're going to do now is, well, first of all, I've got to center everything or it's going to, oh, it's going to drive me crazy. So there we go. That's pretty good. Now we're going to grab the pen tool. That's P on the keyboard. And we're going to click and drag holding shift. And what we're going to do is create the other half of this Bezier curve here. So if we let go now, it's going to want to continue this. And we're going to connect this up and then say it with me. We're going to click and drag holding shift. Now that is quite important. So we effectively create a Bezier curve here as well with two handles. And then with the direct selection tool, we can adjust the curvature. I was going to say curvage then, but that's not really a word, is it? So we can get a nice smooth curve. And then if you do want to, you can go and like delete even more if this is a bit too spirally for you. So you could go for something a bit more chill like this. That is that's pretty nice, actually. Well done, Dan. Oh, bit of self-praise there. And what we'll do is scale this down. Now, this is still a stroke, so we can still adjust the thickness. We could uh, We could round off the cap. So we get nice rounded ends. Lovely. Or we could even use the width tool which is Shift W on the keyboard. And we can adjust the width profile. So we could thicken it up like this, or we could chunk it up in the middle and have it taper off at either end. And you can see what I mean. Because we have the spiral done using the spiral tool, and we haven't tried to, you know, pen tool it like this. And I mean, I mean, that is just, uh, that is diabolical. But when you do it manually, the tapering off of the spiral can happen very inconsistently. So the width between certain parts gets thicker and then it gets thinner. And it's one of those things that you can just use the right tool for the right job. In this case, the spiral tool is going to tighten up the quality of your work and just make it more polished and ultimately more professional. So we've created one delicious spiral. We're very happy with that. And what we could do now is, I mean, we could even and I did this recently, you can add this to lettering. 
So if you did like a really nice letter R, in fact, we'll come back to that in a minute. We'll come back to that in a minute. First of all, I'm just going to duplicate this, flip it around, and I'm going to show you how we can turn this into a lovely frame. So there we go. We'll do something like this. We'll scale that out. We'll round the corners off again with that direct selection tool. Grab this here. Flip and rotate. And uh, let's just move it up. And then we'll align everything centrally. And there we go. We've got um, a lovely, elegant frame. And as I say, we can still adjust all of those stroke properties. So you can make it thinner, thicker, more elegant, whatever you like. Um, and that is just one of many uses for the spiral tool. Right, let's chuck that over there. <laughs> hey, let's just fling you over there. Go on, get out of here. And now what we're going to do, oh wait, actually, I need my spiral. Sorry, sorry, come back. Let me just grab a single spiral and then I'll leave you alone over there. Right. Okay, spiral. So in terms of lettering, I did this recently. What we could do is we could grab the pen tool and we could try and draw a letter R. So we'll do a straight line, press escape to discontinue that curve, that curve, that line. Yeah, sorry, my brain short circuited then. Ellipse tool, click and drag. We could hold shift, or we could have an ellipse. Let's try an ellipse, and we're gonna rotate this slightly. So we're gonna try and create a lovely custom letter R. Something like this could look pretty tasty. And then what we'll do is use the direct selection tool to just remove part of that. Oh, actually, no, that's way too much. Let's undo that. And we'll use the scissor tool. We'll just make a cut. Mm, no, zoom in even more. There? Yeah, we'll make a cut there. And then we'll go up here and make a cut there. So we're just kind of deleting just this segment here. And then what we can do is grab this lovely swirl here. And I'm just going to specifically grab these anchor points. So I'm selecting them with the direct selection tool, command or control C to copy, command or control V to paste. And uh, oh, it's given me a little bit too much there. So I'm just going to, let's add another cut here with the scissors tool. So remember that C on the keyboard. And we'll delete this pit. There we go. So I just want this. And we're going to flip it around the other way. Fantastic. And what I need to do is effectively just line up these two points here. So let's zoom in. We'll just try and connect them as best we can. Now, this can be a bit manual, but there is a trick to get them to snap perfectly. So we're going to direct selection tool again, select them both, go to object, down to path, and we're going to go for average. And what this does is it will pull these anchor points to the exact same coordinates. And then we can use Command or Control J if we wanted to join them together. But we don't want to do that yet. What we want to do is select our spiral. As you can see, there's a bit of a kink in there. And well, <laughs> wouldn't always say no to a bit of kink, but not right now, Dan. We need to smooth out this path. So we're going to press R for the rotate tool. We're going to click on this point and then rotate until we get a nice smooth curve. And then to resize it so it doesn't kind of muck anything up, we're going to press S for the scale tool. And we're just going to click on that point again. And then we're scaling to or from that point. As you can see, this tool is a bit funny, but we're scaling down. And as you can see, I can scale up or down and we're not mucking up that curve. We've taken care of that already. So we could do something like this and then maybe just get rid of one of these points just to kind of keep it a little bit less spirally. And then what we could do here is we can get rid of you now because I'm feeling pretty confident at this point. We just want another spiral. So let's let's use this bit here and we'll add. In fact, let's use the direct selection tool to get rid of these. And we're not too far off there. I mean, that's okay. Yeah, that is okay. That isn't too bad. Another way we could do this, if you wanted to be a little bit more freehand, 
is we could make a cut here with the scissor tool, direct selection tool to delete this top part, grab the bottom spiral and then press N for the pencil tool, double click this. Um, I'm using a mouse, so I'm going to crank up my smoothness because I want a nice smooth curve. Just make sure you've got keep selected and edit selected paths checked. And then with this spiral down here selected, we can try to continue this. And I'm going to draw this freehand and it should smooth that out. And that's that's turned out quite well, actually. I wasn't expecting it to be that good, but I will take that. So that's just kind of one way that you can do it a little bit more freehand if you want. Now, of course, there's many things here that I need to go and refine for this to be, you know, typographically correct. But the great thing about this is I very quickly and easily drawn a custom letter. We didn't freehand all of the spirals, so we made use of that spiral tool to get much better, more precise curves. And again, I've still got full control over the stroke weight, so I can adjust all of these properties and uh, fine tune everything until I get my perfect letter R. And there we go. That is just one of many tools that you definitely need to learn in Illustrator if you want to level up the quality of your work. But fortunately, I've got another video on screen that is going to cover 10 tools and features you absolutely must know.